Hey guys, welcome to another video. If you haven't already seen the first part of this painting, which was the background, we that was my last video, so you're more than welcome to check that out if you'd like to see how that background came together. And today we're going to be painting the figure himself. I had so much fun with this one. I really took my time and I experimented with some things that I've been wanting to try and I'm really really happy with how he turned out and I was so nervous laying down those first colors because I thought I had just ruined everything and they were too dark but you know it's it was one of those experiences definitely where trying new things with watercolors really paid off in the instance of this one uh, and I'm really glad that I took the time to work out the things that I did and I hope you guys enjoy it too. So I'll be intermittently talking about the painting itself, but the topic I want to discuss with you guys today is also just like this painting, it's the second half of the topic we were talking about in my last video. So my last video I told you my favorite thing about being an artist, what I feel for me is the best thing about being an artist. And today I want to talk about the opposite side of that, which is the worst thing about being an artist, in, in my opinion. So my least favorite thing about being an artist. And while I had trouble choosing my favorite thing, I didn't really um, struggle very much with when it comes to my least favorite thing about this. And it actually has nothing to do with creating art. I think I said that for my favorite thing also. <laughs> but my least favorite thing about being an artist is actually the mental stress. And I think that stems from the fact that as an artist, it's kind of your job in a lot of instances, depending on what kind of art you do, to wear your heart on your sleeve because your heart is kind of what you're showing people when you share your art or want to sell your art or make videos about your art. You're taking something that's in your head and potentially in your heart and showing that to people and hoping that they like it enough to support you. And that's a little bit terrifying. And there can also be a lot of stress involved because you are looking at other people's works and it's hard sometimes to remember then when you're looking at other people's stuff that you're seeing their hearts too. That what you're looking at is their version of what you're doing. And it can be so easy to just look at other people's art and just see how it's better than yours or how they do things in a way that you didn't think of and it, it can really affect your self-worth or at least it does for me. It really, self-worth is a big struggle for me. I, I, especially in terms of art, I end up feeling just less valuable because I, I don't always feel like I'm creating at the same level or, or thinking in the same way as other people. And that can be really difficult and also really damaging. So with art, there's this constant damaging and healing that we do to ourselves, or at least that I do to myself, where I like it hurts to compare myself to other artists but there are times when I need to discover new techniques and I need to break out of a mold that I've gotten myself stuck in so I need to look at other art and it's this constant process of breaking and healing and breaking and healing that ultimately makes you stronger and makes you better but doesn't make it any less painful. It's similar to when you work out and you're exercising and what's happening is the reason you get sore after you exercise is your muscles have been pushed further than they were pushed before and they need time to heal. But then after they healed, they're stronger. And I think a really similar thing happens in art. There's a lot of mental stress and emotional stress, but if you can push through it, and continue creating and accepting the support of others and taking times to take breaks when you're sore and when it hurts too much instead of pushing through those sore points and just really injuring yourself the result is that you're stronger and 
I wish I could say that I've experienced a point or I think a point will come when I will always be confident in my art and I will never experience this pain anymore. But in all honesty, I don't think that'll ever happen and I don't think that it ever should. I think that the pain of growing, the growing pains, the exercising pains of art are important. And those are the things that encourage you and push you to do more and to do better. And I, I kind of can't wait to look back on this month and see the very first piece I created and think about how I was feeling then about art and then to look back on pieces like this where I remember talking to my husband about this piece when I had finished it and saying, I don't care what anybody else thinks about this. I feel like this is the best painting I've ever done. And that means a lot for me to go, even if people love this or hate this, I'm going to share it and I'm happy with it and I'm proud of it. And I really do feel like in the case of this piece, I accomplished something that I didn't know that I could even do. And those moments are so rare. And while there are things that didn't go exactly how I wanted with this piece, it was this incredible learning experience. And because of the way I split it up and worked on it on different times and with Thanksgiving and the first part of this being a separate video, I actually spent multiple days on this painting in different sessions. And that was so good. It was so good that I didn't try to do this all at once because it wouldn't have been as good. I mean, I did the background one day and I did the hair one day and I did the skin on a different day. and being able to split those up and come back to the painting with fresh eyes every time was a really big deal because if I had tried to do it all at once I would have done the background and then not had as much stamina to spend time on making the skin good and then that wouldn't have been as good and then I wouldn't have done the hair in that same day and the whole piece just wouldn't have been as developed as it could have. And I am putting eyebrows like at the top of my list of things to study and learn because I've been really unhappy with the way I've done eyebrows for a while. And I really want to take the time to get better at those and learn them because I feel like it's almost the same thing with the hair. I'm not super happy with the hair and the eyebrows and I feel like they drag the piece down a bit because I love the background and the skin so much and I feel like it shows that those are things I've taken the time to study and learn. I need to do that with other aspects as well. So I'm a little bit sad that our portrait painting week is coming to an end and ultimately only had like three paintings in it because of the holiday and this piece being two separate videos. Um, but I'm also really looking forward to when this challenge is over prioritizing pieces like this more where I can really slow down and enjoy the process of painting more sculpted, more defined portraits and faces and characters and it's I'm really excited and I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching this video. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I'd really love to hear from you and you know let me know what you're thinking let me know if you have been drawing or painting along as well i've heard from a few of you who are doing that and that's so amazing and i hope you guys have had a wonderful week it is friday again already so i will see you on monday where we are going to start painting things other than faces and i'm super excited so thanks so much for watching this video guys i will see you next week have a wonderful weekend bye